Few places on earth are as remote, yet as evocative, as the great and terrible wilderness of the Sinai. The very name stirs childhood memories of stories emanating from this awesome and holy place. Uh, each time I have been here, however, trekking the burning sands and climbing these craggy mountains, I've become even more aware of the eternal nature of God. In this place, I have found that the principles which enable all God's children to make it on their own through the personal wilderness are still here. asking myself, uh, why do I return to the desert? Uh, why not to the mountains or to the seashore? Uh, why the desert with its scorching sands and uh, craggy mountains? Emerging from the dark night of my own soul several years ago when it seemed I had almost destroyed myself and my own family, uh, I determined to trace the literal path of those early searchers of promise, uh, returning to the Sinai again and again across these years, I've begun to understand that there is indeed some kind of way through the wilderness, uh, that what Moses did, I can do also. Uh, this wilderness still remains a place of purification, a place of preparation, a place where a man can learn to distinguish between the clamoring voices of this world and the often quiet, gentle voice of God. That's why I return. Across the years, I have brought together small groups of men. And we have entered the Sinai as strangers, but emerged as family. This group that I have with me this time came into the Sinai as virtual strangers very few of the men knew each other. We're a group of 12, uh, seeking in our own way to find and to follow the footsteps of Moses and the footsteps of that band of Israelites on their way from Egypt uh, to Canaan. You know, there's certain days in the lives of people that arrive unannounced, that uh, don't have any heralded trumpets of any kind, <clears throat> no lightning flashes. They seem to be common, ordinary days. And yet, looking back on them, we find out that they're the most important and special days uh, in our lives. Moses had one of these days. He'd been out here in this wilderness for 40 years, had given up all thoughts of ever going back to Egypt, of ever having uh, his place in the Pharaoh's palace again, uh, was doing simply the thing that his hand found to do. He was herding sheep and goats for his father-in-law Jethro, uh, doing the common things. Uh, when coming through a valley very similar to this, uh, came to the base of Mount Sinai. And it was a morning very much like this morning, uh, with the sun coming up over the mountains, uh, the sheep and goats uh, foraging on the hillside, uh, Moses leaning back up against his staff and resting when he noticed a phenomena that has changed history. A bush, perhaps a bush like this broom bush, uh, caught on fire. That's not an unusual thing, especially at Sinai, because oftentimes the dry bushes catching the reflecting rays of the crystals in the bottom of the wadi uh, do burn. But this was an unusual bush because it was not consumed when it burned. And it burned and it burned. And Moses had time. He never had time in Egypt. But out here in the desert, you have lots of time. And so Moses had time to turn aside and look at the bush. And when he got to the base of it, a voice spoke. It was the first time anyone had heard God's voice in 480 years. But God spoke and called Moses by name. You remember the little quadrant from Elizabeth Barrett Browning, Earth's crammed with heaven and every common bush afire with God. But only he who hears takes off his shoes. The rest sit around and eat blackberries. You know, the problem with most of us is we're too busy. 
We're too busy to stop and inquire. We're too busy to get quiet and listen. And even if God called our name, we, we wouldn't be able to hear it because we're on the go too much. Think about all those men in the Bible that God called, uh, Gideon and Amos and Isaiah. And they were all busy men, and yet they were busy doing the things that they were supposed to be doing. Every one of them uh, occupied with the small task that was at hand. And yet when the call of God came, they answered. Moses was 80 years old when he was out here in this desert. For 40 years he had been here. He was a middle-aged man when he arrived. And yet still God called him at the age of 80, a voice speaking out of this burning bush, giving him a task to go back to Egypt and to say to the Pharaoh, let my people go. There's an eternal formula that I have learned to apply to my own life, that once I submitted my life to Jesus Christ, from that time on, I had voluntarily surrendered the right to choose or the power to vary the consequences of that decision. Moses had done that with his life. He had given it over to God and was then waiting on the Lord. The word wait actually means to be entwined. It's like pieces of a rope that are all entwined together. And Moses and God had become one, even though he didn't know his name. Perhaps the greatest blessing is to be unencumbered so that when your bush burns and when God speaks, you can rise and you can answer. We're to be busy waiting on God because bushes still burn and God is still calling each one of us by name, no matter how old we may be or what our circumstances are.